build. Hi friends, I am building a wooden house. I am so excited. I love building things. I think it's so cool how you can get instructions for something and then piece by piece by piece create something whole and awesome. One thing that's really important though when you're building is that you have a solid foundation. Now, a foundation is just something that you choose to build on top of. Like for me, I'm building my house on this wooden plank, which is really solid and really firm, but Jesus actually talks about something even more important that you build on a foundation that's even stronger. In Matthew 7, he talks about how we're supposed to build our lives on the Word of God. Verses 24 through 27 say, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes down in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When it rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So today I have a wise builder and a foolish builder. And we're gonna see what it looks like when they build their lives. So when we hear the word of God, we all start off the same. We can choose what to build our lives on. It's a completely blank slate. The wise builder chose to build his life on the word of God, which is like building his life on a strong rock for foundation. And the foolish builder chose to build his life on things of the world, which is like building his house on unsteady sand. So let's see some of the ways they build up their lives. All right, everyone, it's time for tithes and offerings. Now, it is so important to give with a good heart. God has asked all of us to be generous in everything that we do. And we want Man, to sure I don't want to give this money. I worked hard for this money. Why does God need it anyway? He's rich. He created everything. He doesn't need my money. I think I'm just going to keep it. So I want all of you guys... Yeah, I don't want to give this. It doesn't make any sense. God, I thank you for the blessings you've given me. I choose to give it back to you because I love you. All right, you guys, um, if you have something to give, you can put it in the bucket. Okie doke. When the foolish builder decided not to give, he was trying to store up his money for himself. He put his trust in his money instead of God. So his house only has a little bit in it because God wasn't able to help him with it. The wise builder trusted God enough to give back. And when he did, God was able to bless him with more and more and more. Whoa, bro, those are some awesome skills. Yeah, man, you know, I'm pretty good. God gave you some cool, that's awesome, man. God does awesome things for us. Who? He gives us, God, he gives us awesome skills and I think he gave you that. Nah, dude, that's me. That's just years of hard work. Oh. That's it. Oh. You see this metal? I did that too. Oh, okay. Yeah, all me. Nothing but me. That's oh. it. Okay. That's it, man. Whoa, man, that is super good. You've got a talent for that dude. Thanks man. Yeah man. Uh, when I was young the Lord he just began to work with me and he gave me this gift to draw things. I could dude it's super good. He'll do it he'll do it man every single time the Lord he'll give you all of your giftings. The word of God says that we're supposed to thank God for everything that we have and the wise builder did just that. He used his gifts to bring glory to God but the foolish builder took all the glory for himself. He built his life on the idea that all the good things he had and could do came from himself. All right, so the Bible tells us that bad company corrupts good morals, which means that God wants us to hang out with good people that are gonna help us to do the things that he wants us to do, you know? Oh, actually that's all the time we've got for today, you guys. Um, Thanks for coming, this has been great. Hey man, what's up? Yeah, dude, I just got out of out of this this meeting. What are you doing? Oh, okay. Isn't that a scary movie though? Yeah, man. I don't know if I should go see that. 
I mean, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah, it's not gonna hurt nothing. I guess I'll go see it. All right, dude. See you then. Hey, man. Yeah, I just got out of my Bible study. Uh, I was wondering, do you want to go get some food before the worship night? Oh, all right, man. That sounds great. I'm excited too. It's gonna be really awesome. All right, I'll see you. Bye. The wise builder was building himself up with godly friends, so his life is full of good things from God. But the foolish builder was hanging out with people that weren't doing good things at all. He's been building his life on all kinds of bad things. So let's see what happens when the storms of life come to both of these houses. Storms can be all kinds of things. Not having enough money, feeling lonely or afraid, or all sorts of other stuff. Now when the storms first come, it's not really that bad. Both houses look like they'll be fine. But, like Jesus said in the scripture, when things get really bad in life, that's when you need a solid foundation on the rock. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 27, that if someone builds their life on sand, when the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. But if you build your life on God's word, remember verse 25 says, Though the rain comes in torrents, and the flood waters rise, and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. So God wants all of us to go out and build our lives on the Word. And we can only do that when we read the instructions in the Bible and do what they say. When we do that, our houses are gonna be strong and sturdy. So I want all of you to go out and, and build, build on, on the, the rock. rock.